uh, do this to time and bring the interaction in. So as I'm speaking, folks, this is just a warm up. You're, you're not missing anything. And uh, myself and Aidan have just discussed that we're going to record this one so that, you know, for the people who don't make it, they can actually um, uh, watch it afterwards. Um, and as I said, we, we have a whole new format. Um, which is going to try and make it interactive within the meeting um, rather than, um, you know, sending you out surveys afterwards. So um, just to um, pop up the agenda for today, as I said, we've moved these meetings to monthly. Um, that's to make it fit better with the online format so that, you know, we're trying to shoot for an hour. And um, we tried to do various surveys for you um, to get interaction. We, we I'll talk about the the, the, the survey response, et cetera, but today we're going to just going to try a different format change. So much more interactive webinar type format um, in the absence of a guest speaker. And we're going to try and work it to 30 minutes, uh, myself and Aidan. So I've undertaken to kind of lead um, with the presentation and then there'll be a, bit, a little bit of banter between myself and Aidan and there'll be some opportunities for you all to feedback. So normally we say to you at this point, um, phones on silent. Um, please do keep your phone on silent, but you will need your phone beside you. And um, we're going to try and just do some interaction on screen and and use the phone. So you, we'll stay in the meeting, but use the, the the phones for the interaction. So the agenda for today is format change. Um, these live polls. Just we're just going to do a quick test on on an alternative fuel compare table. Just a quick test. I want to talk to you about the Climate Act of, Act 2020, big, big development. And then we want to just remind you about the green certificate versus some of the other certificates you've heard about and chat a little bit about the budget as well. I think, Aidan, that, that's where you might want to come in and some of the questions that have cropped up. So um, in terms of the format change, this is interactive. Um, I've got the chat open. You can use the chat to talk to um, each other. Um, and if the background noise allowing, I don't have a problem with people kind of, you know, putting their hand up to to make a point or, or jump in. We'll try and manage it. Today, I'm keeping the time fairly tight and we're going to try some on the spot polls. OK, just see how things are going. And the aim here is to make these meetings productive for you. So um, please do uh, answer that poll when we get to it in a couple of minutes time. So. Just to chat briefly about um, the actions from the last meeting, we, Aidan circulated the minutes um, from the 30th of September. Um, so we asked you all to send us in details of toll discounts or lack thereof for alternative fuel vehicles. Um, we, we didn't get a huge response, but I think the really key thing, if those of you who attended um, there last week on the 22nd of October, there was an absolutely you know, crystal clear opportunity there to interact with TII to give them the evidence needed. So you, you will hear me and I will be like a broken record as Aidan will be on this topic. But, um, you know, since then, the questions that you had, because Cal, um, who was speaker from TII, invited some feedback, even though he wasn't able to answer the question on the spot, he has escalated your questions. Your questions have been sent by Aidan. Um, Cal has um, copied Aidan in on the email onto the consultant that is managing the grants process. You remember you heard about the grants and the budget and you're looking for more information about it. So those questions have gone to TII and it's there. But as I say, we are missing that golden opportunity um, to give them evidence of issues with the tolling system, um, which is obviously a separate topic. But um, I would absolutely urge you all, um, and it may be just a one liner, it may be a photograph. It may be just a particular instance of challenges that you have. No need to be worrying about GDPR or anything like that. Just just fire them on to Aiden and uh, we'll 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 assemble them and present them for TII. Aiden, did you want to make any comments on that one? I, th I thought Cal came back to you very quickly, but any extra comments on it? Yeah, the, the only thing I'd say, like, I mean, it was interesting news at, at the presentation last week from Cahill that they are actually looking after the grant process so it's good news that we do have a relationship with Cahill within the TII which is uh, very beneficial for us I think a number of uh, the members of this group indeed uh, would have met and spoken to Cahill at the Arab uh, led um, a consultancy project that they've done on, on behalf of TII so um, he's he seems to be a decent enough guy he 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 does respond to queries and questions um, and he's obviously open then at some stage for, for, the, for them to come in and give a presentation and update to the members in relation to the grant process. So I think it's, it's that, positive. That, yeah. that, that's super. And I think having these monthly meetings helps because it means that every month we can give Cahill and his colleagues a deadline to work to. You know, if you have an answer, by, an answer by this date, you can come on and tell us about it on this date. So I think, you know, that regularity helps in terms of keeping the pace of things up. So we asked you all to complete the survey. We only got seven responses after repeated reminders. And to be frank, 
Well, that's great. Um, and we will show you the, the responses in a second. That's one of the reasons why we're changing the meeting format to actually do the interaction inside the meeting, um, just to get it all done in the moment. Um, please do suggest speakers. We have a little bit of a lineup there, um, but we don't have a long queue. So if there are particular customers or particular speakers that you would like, um, please do let us know. And they don't have to be massive big PowerPoints, you know, 10 minutes, chat about something positive, you know, um, maybe it's an award you're getting, maybe it's a submission you're putting in, maybe it's a planning issue, whatever it may be, um, you know, do, do do suggest it to us. And bear in mind that obviously you have fellow members on the call here with you. So other people may have been through similar situations and be able to share with you. So that's what we mean about interaction. You know, it doesn't have to be a big 20, 30 minute presentation or indeed a sales pitch. You can come in, you know, t tell us about what it is you want to talk about and you can get some feedback from the other members on the call. And, and that's what we mean by change. And um, please, please send in any good news. Um, you know, I see stuff popping up on Twitter. I see different things. It's not necessarily coming through to the FTA. Again, we need that evidence. And bear in mind what Aidan told you from the last meeting, the minister's door is open. They are actively seeking your feedback. It's not often you hear that from any minister anywhere. Um, so I would certainly be urging you, um, no matter how small or how short the opportunity, the barrier, you know, the, the award, the new initiative, the new test that you're doing, you know, please send it. It may be just you've hired a few interns. It may be you've got a couple of EVs on test, CD, CNG vehicles on test, etc. You know, it's those little sound bites that we want to do to show, demonstrate for Aiden the activity and change that's going on across the sector. Yeah, and I, I'd reiterate that, Connor. I mean, we were talking a bit earlier from a, another conversation I had in relation to Brexit planning uh, earlier on today about Wi-Fi testing on ferries for, for those that weren't on the call. I mean, industry haven't participated too well in a, in a test last week. Only two companies have provided data to revenue um, around a crucial bit of um, uh, a, a crucial part of the process for understanding routing uh, come the 1st of January. And we, and we really need to be providing evidence um, of, of, of um, uh, how these systems actually work. If we don't, um, you know, the state operators won't take any heed and they won't help us um, uh, correct them. And likewise, uh, I think you can't beat, uh, and that was uh, what was interesting from the NTA's pr presentation last week as well, in terms of that they're looking at various different types of uh, vehicles in, in the future, but but everything is backed up by some sort of report or some sort of testing, whether people agree with them or not. And I think um, I, I would definitely encourage members for um, uh, their engagement with alternative fuels, if we can back them up with the case studies that we've actually done with BWG is massively important in terms of helping represent uh, what what our members effectively um, you know want support on um, ultimately and, and kind of recognition for doing all of these things um, really really helps our our cause and and kind of uh, supports the kind of roll rollout of this for for industry in general. So, well 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 said, Aidan. And I think just you know I do appreciate I've worked um, with SMEs and you know busy companies in transport for many years. It is very difficult to find the time to do this, but I suppose it's a side effect of your success. It's a side effect that we now have a dedicated minister for your sector that they are looking for input. So it's really, really important to get in whatever you can um, in whatever way, shape or form it is now while that door is open and keep it open for the future. Um, so just I mentioned the survey and um, we only got seven um, responses. We tried to make it really fast. Average time to complete was less than five minutes, according to the survey. So we, we think we delivered on that. Um, and here's just one of the answers, which just it forms a nice graphic. So I said I'd pop it up here to let you let you see it. Aiden has the full download, as do I. But it was just in terms of that question about where should the next stations be? Um, so with Cashel Junction 8 Fast Phil now open and working well, um, please rank from one, the most urgent to the least urgent, um, number seven, the sites to meet your needs for fast fill of gas vehicles. And you can see there Port Leash, um, we came up as number one, then at Lone, then Bally Simon, then Wexford, Ross Lair, Ballina, Longford, Kilkenny and Waterford. And it's just to show you that, you know, the surveys do work. We can get some responses there and it gives some ammunition to Aidan, but really sample size of seven, amongst the many, many members that FTA has, I, I really do think you, you need to get, get in there and start applying, you know, and and, to, and and making your voices heard. And for those of you who feel that maybe Bally Simon should be up first, you know, you need to get out there and vote and tell us and, and respond. Um, but we said we'd make this a little bit more interactive. So on the screen now is a tool called Slido, 
which is a live interaction tool. And um, the question I'm asking you, and sorry, I should explain how this works. You can go to slido.com on your phone, or if your phone has a, has a camera on the search button, so on the search bar, you may see a camera. If it does, you can scan the QR code and that will take you directly um, to the Slido survey. And this particular one, this first one is really just, you know, to type in a word and uh, what one action or topic in one word do you want a as a takeaway from today's meeting? And, you know, this might be something we put on the next meeting. The really the key thing is just, just to get in as many words and topics as you like. So I'll just wait a second there. I can see no one's responded yet. You're all busily trying to find slido.com. And um, you'll see me on camera now just holding my camera up to the screen just to get it, and he says, sit now. So basically my phone now has gone directly to Slido because I've used the search button. And what I'll do is I'll just put in, um, so is that, if I'm the only one that's responding, we're in trouble. Oh, there we go, excellent. <laughs> Good on you folks, okay. So the, the purpose we have, I'll keep. I'll just talk over for a minute to give you all a good couple of minutes just to keep things in. The point here is that in future, when we ask you questions, that we're able to get your responses there and then quickly as a large group. Okay, so that that's the idea here, and um, we we have lots of different things like this that we can do. But it's it's to sort of replace that interaction that we normally get when we're all around the table having a chat. Okay. And you can see there, we've got five um, takeaways. Information, yeah, very good, seven now. So as soon as we get up to sort of, we have um, 14 on the meeting, which is a great response, thank you very much. As soon as you get up above kind of the 14 and we get some of the planning and support for CNG, support for AD, yeah, very good. Information on the hydrogen trial for the NTA, very good question. I think that's one we might be able to pass on to Anne Graham. Um, Aidan, you know, cause I think even though we're not running buses, it would be great to hear how people get on with the hydrogen uh, and, and how that goes, because the uh, the previous testing they've done has, has been very useful, but it's never been published. And um, yeah, that's brilliant. OK, so that was 50 percent. You know, let's see, can we get this working? And obviously 50 percent to see what topics you're interested in. And I think broadly speaking, um, CNG refueling options nationwide. That's brilliant. So we'll have this recorded and we'll have it um, later on. And I'm glad to see it's working. That's 12 out of 14 responses. If anyone's having a major problem with it, just let us know in, in the chat. You know, if you're just, it's you don't want to respond, that's equally okay, you can stay silent. Um, but uh, we just, I'll just open up the chat just to see if anyone's having any problems there. Okay. He says, as he just wait, jump at me. Okay. So thank you all very much indeed for that. And um, as I said, we're going to keep this one pacey. Nobody has objected to Slido. We'll keep going and um, we'll keep things moving. So um, this is yet another quick test. Um, this is a table comparing the different fuels. It's simplified. It's not really for you. You, you know, this audience here, you're, you're reasonably well up to speed on the different speed on the different fuels, etc. But um, what it is um, is a quick table for other members who are trying to understand what the options are. That's what it is. Now, as I'm talking over it, you'll spot CNG, you'll spot electric, you'll spot yes. hydrogen. Is that that's still there? Is it Aiden? Yeah. Yeah. Great. And um, you know, some biodiesel from waste, etc. So th there's these different options that have been talked about, and we want to try and get them up up on the board or a board so that you can um, have a look at them. And just just a quick reminder of what the different fuels are in terms of comparison, in terms of cost price that you pay per kilowatt hour, the conversion efficiency, this is their energy efficiency on board the vehicle, the delivered cost per kilowatt hour, and then the CO2 um, per kilogram of fuel, okay, or per unit of fuel. So you can see there amongst the various comparisons, um, the different um, units and, you know, how green each one is and the reduced NOx and PM. So if you can just hold that picture in your mind and keep your phones handy, we just ask you very quickly to rate um, from one to five um, how um, how useful that document is, or how useful do you think it is for other members of the FTA? I'd appreciate it's probably a little bit oversimplified for you. Um, so there was one question about the where is uh, the biogas on on the list of vehicles on the previous slide? 
Brilliant. Yeah, I think I've misnamed it, and it, it was there, thing. David. Yeah, and I'll uh, thank you for that tip. I will call it BioCNG for now. Is that what you're thinking of, David? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think I call it bio from biogas from waste, did I? So check that one for you now. But thank you. That's exactly why we do it. So RNG or BioNG. Yes, you're quite correct. We have left it out, right? We've put in BioLNG and we didn't put in BioCNG. So David, we'll put that in for you. OK, and if you have a, a CO2 figure that you'd like to do it. Yeah, I can do. I'll just let it I'll sh go back one. Bosco, there you go. So I've just popped it up there. And that may put the po poll on pause for a second, folks. And hopefully Bosco. Thanks, David. Yeah. And I'll just go forward again, Bosco, just let people finish off their voting. Um, but fours and fives, no, no kind of zeros or ones, which is pretty good. So I think we'll we'll keep it going. And David, yeah, we'll take on board what you said to us there, um, in terms of including it. And I can see Chris is typing, undoubtedly, like another thing. So we'll take all that feedback on board. But we will keep keep things moving. And uh, great to see that that worked, which was the main purpose. Um, and I will edit it down. We will circulate this to you afterwards, as always. Um, so. Just a quick reminder of the energy related CO2 emissions and what's happening with transport. This is from the SEAI's report. And the reason I've popped it up is that the blue line is transport and it's increasing significantly, which is putting transport right in the center of the frame. So the SEAI Energy Awards were this morning. There was quite a number of transport related projects there. Didn't win, right? But nonetheless, you can see that the focus on transport is there. We now have a dedicated minister for freight and you can see freight is, as overall contributes about 14%. Why am I talking about that? Why am I telling you about that? Um, that's excellent. Thanks for that, um, Chris. Um, so why am I talking about that? Because since we last met, the Climate Action and Low Carbon Development Amendment Bill 2020 has been published. Now, you may go, particularly those of you who read it went, oh, this is way above our pay grade. This is a very significant structural change in how Ireland does business. It's in civil servant speak, so that's why it doesn't, you know, we don't really listen to it. It doesn't really relate to us or our language. But what you need to be really clear about is that it establishes a 2050 emissions target of net zero production plus offsets in Irish law. So in other words, you've heard a lot of political statements. We're now seeing this becoming potentially law. Um, and you need to remember that the Dáil voted on a version of this last year. So there is cross-party support for this. There is no opposition to it or no identifiable opposition aside from a few of the usual suspects um, as individual TDs. The vast majority of TDs have voted for this already. Um, and we're now beginning to put this into law. It introduces a system of successive five-year economy-wide carbon budgets starting in 2021. And I'll come back to the meaning of carbon budget in a second. It strengthens the role of the Climate Action Advisory Council. To the date, it's been a bunch of economists. They're now adding in more expertise to it, and they're making it put it on a statutory basis. It introduced a requirement to annually revise the Climate Action Plan. So there was a Climate Action Plan 2019, which fell with the last government, but that is now going to become an annual feature of Irish government. It introduced a requirement for all local authorities to prepare climate action plans. So it's not just central government and their ministers. It is every single local authority, every location that you, your, your businesses operate in. And it gives a stronger oversight rule to the Erectus, to the Eructus through an Eructus Climate Committee. So we're not only going to have a climate um, committee of experts, we're going to have a committee of TDs, very similar to the um, Public Accounts Committee. That is the vision. So expect fireworks. Um, as I said, this is a very significant structural change, and it is now carbon budgets, not carbon footprints. And you may go, what the hell is a carbon budget? So a carbon budget is a maximum permissible amount of CO2 emissions. So we're moving away from this idea that we're going to report emissions and we're going to give ourselves a pat on the back when we reduce it to actually stating in law and in budgets every year how many million tons of CO2 we're going to emit. And what's really interesting about that is that the, um, it's going to be divided up and assigned to the main ministers. So you can expect the Minister for Transport to have a budget, the Minister for Agriculture to have a budget, and so on and so forth. So it's you know really, really important change. Doesn't sound much to now, but it does matter. Um, 
And you can see that Ireland's freight sector emits 14% of energy-related CO2 emissions, and the freight budget in 2030 is effectively going to be halved what it is now. So all of you, all the early movers, you're going to see this bearing fruit, all of your hard work bearing fruit in the years to come. OK, um, but one of the key things to remember is that while that carbon budget is minus 50 percent compared to 2018, um, the population is expected to grow by at least 10 percent. We are a growing economy. We are were in boom and we likely return to it fairly quickly. The population is going to grow 20 to 40 percent by 2050. So all of you can expect your businesses to expand significantly, but you have to have your carbon emissions to 2030 right, compared to where you are at in 2018 in the very simple terms. So think back two years, what your carbon budget was then by two, that's what you need to be by 2030, and you need to be minus 80% by 2050. That's the way it's going. Now, you may say mission impossible. We already know how to do it, folks. I'm not going to bore you with the detail here. We have plenty of speakers that can come along and talk to you about it. And we made a, a start with that. Aidan made a start with that last week um, on the 22nd with the first sustainability meeting um, with the, the NTA and TII attending. So very significant changes coming. OK, um, so last um, quick slide -o for you. Um, does your company have a carbon budget? How many of you have a carbon budget? And I'm not talking about a carbon footprint either. OK, we'll give that a minute. Um, what I would say to you is um, people like Microsoft, so, you know, um, say the likes of Diageo, some of the big customers that you're seeing out there, Smurf or Kappa, those are the kind of people who've been setting themselves carbon budgets. So it may be that it's your customer base that has it and you haven't seen or heard of it yet. But, um, yep, a couple of positives. That's excellent. Thank you. Working on it even better. That's brilliant. Don't know. That's OK. But I think, you know, it, for all of you watching this on the video afterwards and for those of you watching the responses here now, you can see that no, nobody, we know we don't have perfect answers yet. This is a work in progress and it's a work in progress all over the world, not just here in Ireland. Um, so just as we um, begin to work our way through it, the really key takeaway from these two slides is this idea of moving away from, well, we emitted X last year and we're thinking about doing something or we're doing something about it. You are now going to have to actually account for it and um, reduce it year on year. And to give an idea of what the reduction is year on year, roughly speaking for Ireland Inc, for the country as a whole, it's a 7% reduction um, in absolute terms year on year, every year to 2030. That's what we're talking about. So, and that's, you know, we had 3% in the plan that we had last year, we're moving to 7%. So it has doubled, okay? So it's not gonna hit us, you know, tomorrow morning, but it's it's a very, very significant change. So thank you very much indeed for your participation. Um, if you've got any feedback on the, um, on this on the interaction let us know i think from myself and aiden's perspective it's good to see that it works at the very least so we're getting that feedback and we'll be a bit more uh, pointed about our questions in the next one okay so um we've mentioned before the fta accreditation program and what i want to do here is there's been a lot of um chat about the different um certificates that are out there and it's important to realize that um the green certificate that aiden announced last week at the S sustainability webinar um really just forms part of your overall accreditation program. So you've been working with Improva since 2014, and they've been funding your fuel savings and you know, basically giving you rewards, if you like, bonuses. Um, since 2018, the, the programs that you're part of are affiliated with the Smart Freight Centre, which is a global operation, a global talking shop, if you will, but nonetheless, it's there. And um, TK Blue, we brought them on board this year for those of you who get asked by your customers for the full detailed carbon footprint of your um, emissions or the emissions particularly on their work, there is now an online free calculator available to you um, as part of your overall partnership with FTA. So in other words, the accreditation program, we're, we're adding on bits as we're seeing the demand coming through, but you are um, leading globally and um, you're you know you, you are leading your program has been recognized by that that's how come you're invited into smart freight and we have those strategic partnerships in place to support you today obviously you know when you get asked is when you'll come asking us and that's absolutely fine Aidan you happy enough with that so far yeah I am look I think this is something you know it's been kind of a core part of of the association in terms of delivering our what was called the accreditation audit and a truck safe we're going to be delivering passenger safe in um in a, in a couple of weeks and van safe i mean linking in the environmental sustainability piece has been very very important we've been gathering data but we're also kind of seeing um 
notwithstanding, obviously, the stuff that you've spoken about and the focus in relation to the budgets, the new Green Deal and all of that type of thing, we've kind of preempted it. So it's really important to kind of develop uh, kind of recognition uh, for companies that are actively participating in, uh, you know, environmental best practice. Um, and and we're, try, we're trying uh, through that, obviously, then it improves competitiveness. It influences proc procurement in terms of questions. Um, leading obviously to, you know, and, and I'm kind of like a broken record talking about this, but when we're talking about our manager's guide to distribution costs, there is the ultimate benefit. There has to be uh, strong business decisions for companies to transition. Um, so so all, all of this is kind of linked together um, and it's just absolutely fabulous for, from our perspective to see how this is going from a global recognition perspective, Connor, and and that, that is the one thing that we need our members and obviously this, this group uh, to kind of uh, buy into as well as, is, is um, you know, that, that this will have and does have kind of global outreach, you know, um, uh, through, through the Smart Freight program yeah. as well, and you know. And I think for those of you who are a little bit sceptical, and rightly so, because there's been a lot of talk about this over many, many years, particularly if you're active in the UK, you know, um, I can see a question coming in from Bosco Creed there, which I'm going to answer, but Bosco works for South Coast. And if you key South Coast um, Logistics and Smart Freight into Google, you will see the case story that's up there on Smart Freight, the global website for um, South Coast based here in Ireland. OK, so the recognition is out there. It's readily available if you need it to help you close sales or help you, um, you know, secure and, and retain business. So it's just to you know, echo what Aidan was just saying. There is recognition out there. Obviously, it's up to you as members to make the most of it. All we can do is help you, if you like, by supporting and providing the tools. And just by way of answering um, Bosco's question about, you know, what these budgets mean and how they work. Um, you know, first and foremost, you know, how we work as an industry is different from necessarily how government works, right? But broadly speaking, the way we're, we're, we're moving is um, in the years gone by, government was prepared to recognize savings in litres per 100 kilometres. So that's what we all got focused on because Ireland put energy efficiency first and probably always will. But nonetheless, we need to move on now to litres per tonne kilometre. OK, so that's going to be a bit of a journey. It's been a bit of a journey elsewhere where people have invested a lot of money and they're still not there yet. Um, you know, we have a big advantage in that we're very good at doing litres and, and kilometres. We've got a lot of work to do on the tons. Um, TK Blue are there to help you manage and measure and report an individual route. So this is where we're talking about how um, a route performs for a particular client, right, or a particular job, and that will do all modes. So not only your road freight, but also your air, sea, you know, inland waterways if you use and everything can be included in that. And then smart freight, we've mentioned them several times, but their training and best practice is all around standardization, making life simple as possible and providing metrics for procurement, as Aidan said. And we've just seen this year the first procurement coming into the Irish freight sector where Irish hauliers are having to respond, they're having to answer these questions. And, you know, I would be, I wouldn't, I'd hesitate to say it's as simple as the answer is in your accreditation scheme, but that's the idea, okay? The basics of the answers are in your accreditation scheme. So um, answering Bosco's question, Bosco asked a good question, folks, there in the chat about, you know, if you don't have good year one data, how do you show an improvement in year two? Well, the answer is you don't. It's going to be showing an improvement in year three if you want to go with the Irish way where everything is metered and measured. Having said that, Smart Freight do provide a series of benchmarks to plug the gaps. So there are default values available to you to plug gaps in your knowledge for, if you like, your year one baseline. So, you know, that, that's how we plug the gaps and that's how the rest of the world is doing it. The way we are coming at it is, if you like, the more correct way. We've always worked with metered data here in Ireland, which is one of the reasons why we've been recognized by Smart Freight and others have been someone that's a program that's worth having on board in their programs. They're interested in how we did it, how you guys did it. So, so that's part and parcel of it. Um, but when it comes to things like the conversion factors for CNG, LNG, bio, bio LNG and all those things, you know, the muddies can get the waters can get a little bit muddied. So having those default values is very powerful because it means they're not going to be questions all over the world. No matter who you're dealing with, if the customers come from China, the customers come from England, those default values are now the standard worldwide. Absolutely. You can talk about being even greener if you wish. No problem. But all those default values are now, if you like, agreed uh, globally they're, they're, they're out there and that's becoming an ISO standard. So in terms of how the carbon budget works, 
you know, the detail of what you do is up to you. But ultimately, you need to know what your total carbon footprint is. And you'll find that in the EcoFleet app. It's on the first page of the budget. It gives you your energy related CO2, which for most um, transport companies will be primarily your transport fuels, like 90 percent transport fuel. Um, obviously, you'll need some help with some of the extras. But, you know, if that comes up, we're here to help. You can just shout. We'll help you out. We'll show you how to do the spreadsheet. It is not a difficult job. OK, so um, we're not really answering your question, Bosco. What we're saying to you is we've made a good start. You need to um, keep going and you need to start thinking about how much will you need to reduce your carbon budget from 2018, your carbon emissions, if you like, from 2018 by 50 percent to 2030. You know, it is well recognized and a minister being dedicated to freight recognizes that this is a very, very big challenge. But nonetheless, if you attend the various training courses that Aiden is providing, some of the courses that are available online via Smart Freight, you can see what some of the solutions are. And, and South Coast, I know Bosco, you, you've got some good plans there to do it. So I promised you 30 minutes. Um, I'm not going to I just quickly build up this slide, but it's just a quick reminder of the slide that Aiden used. You know, you are already part of Ireland's Green Freight Programme. You have the supports, you have the strategic relationships. Please do use them. It is a mature scheme now at this stage. You've been at it many years and we have the records there to do it. And which department will be asking DBT for their carbon budget? Um, it, it will be a broad, 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 um, how would I put it, broad brush to start with. It will be the freight sector reporting as, as a whole. And then it's only really when you go to tender that you'll be asked for your carbon budgets and things like that. And it's a way of thinking about things. We're moving away from carbon footprints to carbon budgets. So as government does that, which is the really big change that's in the Climate Act, um, James, the, 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 um, the, we're going to see that trickle down to all of us, that, that the language is going to Transport as a whole in Ireland will have a carbon budget, not a carbon footprint in future. And that's where you're going to see it trickle down to you. So as I said at the outset, nothing to worry about tomorrow. Nobody's going to hammer you for it, but you're already by just doing and participating in the, in the accreditation program, you're already several steps ahead, as has been recognised by Smart Freight. So in terms of um, the chat and the um, Slido, um, I'm hoping that you feel it's, it's positive and it's worked. And uh, one of the things that you can do is kind of, you can give me a thumbs up there in the chat just to see for those of you who don't feel like typing, because many of us don't. I know when I'm talking or paying attention to these things, I don't like doing it. But see if you can give us a couple of emojis there in the chat, like a thumbs up or whatever, just to say, you know, if it's working. And in terms of the new format, we're there 33 minutes in now. So not too far off the time. And uh, yeah, again, thanks very much. That's great. We'll record that afterwards. But you can see the, the difference. We're trying to make it quick, fast, snappy. Hopefully suits suits the business. And um, feel free to come back to us and come back to Aiden with any criticisms that you have about it as well. We're, we are interested. We're always interested to improve. So um, last couple of quick points for you is, A, thank you all for your participation today. I think with this new format, when we get our next speaker lined up for the next month's event, uh, and fe again, feel free to nominate. Um, we're going to try and make it as pointedly interactive as we can for you, um, working with the speakers um, to do it. So all of you who've been previous speakers, feel free to come back and say, could you get this question answered for us? Uh, you know, if there's other topics like that, and likewise um, with the speakers that were that are nominated, we'll be trying to make their their presentations as interactive as we can. So we'll be doing a little bit more prep with them, um, ju just just to make it work. Uh, finally, Aidan, am I allowed to talk about the new web page for the group? Yeah. Great stuff. Right. So um, one of the th things we said to you um, was there's a lot of resources now after two and a bit years of this group working together. You will find it there at the FTAI.ie forward slash alternative dash fuels dash working dash group. Um, obviously, it'll be in the notes afterwards. You can click on it. Don't be too worried about typing it. But all of the old papers, the links to the various websites, those of you who are suppliers, those of you who are um, you know, in, in the business of building these stations. And if you have a paper or a case story or a study that you'd like to bring, please email it into us. Let us update that web page with it. And, you know, that will become a central resource for you. So some of you who've joined the group in recent months are probably going, oh, you mentioned this and where do I find that and where is it? It's now all on one web page that is available to members. OK, so um, we'd ask, we'd urge you to go in there and tell us. And then finally, a reminder from me, those of you who are participating, and nearly all of you are, in the accreditation scheme, um, we need your data up to date to the 30th of September 2020 um, to not only get you paid, 
um, as you may have heard us say this many times, save fuel and get paid, save energy and get paid um, under that scheme, but also to make sure that you stay in um, past 2021 and all the way out to 2030. If you're not up to date as of the 30th September, you will have to start again um, on the 1st of January 2021. Okay, that's me, Aidan. I was speeding up a bit there. So is there anything you'd like to add? No, it's just excellent. Um, I like the new format. I think, yeah, I think the next meeting, uh, we will try and get a bit of engagement. Great to see the comments coming in. Um, I think the website, just to reiterate, it's just been updated in the last week or two. We do want uh, to keep it fresh um, and build that library of information as a resource for, for everybody. Um, and just in general, to, to reiterate what you said at, at, at the very start, um, you know, we're here to represent for our members. Uh, we're covering all forms of alternative uh, technologies uh, issues that that operators or companies have in terms of this transition to keep those uh, views and ideas and suggestions coming into me to make representation to uh, the minister who is very interested in this whole area because she obviously chaired the climate action uh, committee that delivered the report a couple of years ago so she has a keen um uh, interest in all of this and she said look ask me what to do you know so it's up to us to kind of really push uh, uh, the end the industry agenda in relation to this and we do want to see what we started out from is more of the cng fueling sites open and we want to see a, a more thoughtful process of the transition for, for operators and so on so look well well done connor and we we'll keep at it I, I i think that the monthly meetings are working very well and it does keep uh, this fresh uh, for everybody Indeed. Thank you very much, indeed. And thank, thank you very much, indeed, everyone, for your feedback. Um, please do remember, if you have a question you'd like answered and would like it put up on a slide for the next month, do send it in to us. Hopefully, we get lots of them and we have lots to choose from. If we don't, we have a few ourselves lined up and we'll, we'll hit you with those instead. But, folks, we'll bring matters to a close. And the recording will be up after this one, and uh, we'll try and uh, do a version of this on the next one and, and take the lessons out and apply them. Thank you very much, indeed, one and all. Best of luck, folks. Thank you. Cheers. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.